Welcome to Oddities and Details, a series where I talk about things I've noticed in pieces of media that make me go either, why is this here, it's so weird, and or, why is this here, they didn't have to put in so much effort. Today's topic is LEGO City Undercover. As I've said in my previous videos about it, it's my favorite video game of all time. I've replayed it so much over the years that it's a problem. I'm starting to see phantom studs. But across all the times I've played it, I've noticed some things and I have some facts that you probably didn't know before. Let's get started with the cool fact that there's a ton of extra dialogue for scenes that you will only spend a short time in. Train driver Bob has some dialogue before you unlock the trains. Come back later this afternoon. Service should have been restored by then. I can sell you a ticket if you like, but you will have to walk to your destination. Is there something else? What? What is it? Get lost. If you keep Honey waiting the police station tour, he says an impressive amount of dialogue. Eventually he makes a reference to Metal Gear Solid, first with Chase's name, but then he actually says Snake? Snake? SNAKE! There are so many more cases of this, but I'll leave the rest for you to find out. There is a stud in the city that you will never be able to collect, at least through normal means. The fire station isn't enterable in the city and really just acts as an entrance for the level. And yet, there is a blue stud on the other side of the gate. Maybe it means that you could enter it at one point in development. Or maybe the more likely answer is that it's just there to taunt us. By modding the run speed, I was able to get to the other side, but there's a gate here too, so you have to use attract studs to collect it. A lot of the NPCs in the mine and construction yard are just clones of Chase McCain. It's very surreal, especially in the intro cutscene for the Bluebell Mine. That is Chase McCain talking to Chase McCain! When Blackwell Bridge is closed, besides there being some funny dialogue here, it's actually possible to climb to the top of it. Despite keeping all the other Nintendo references from the Wii U version, the Switch version of Undercover is missing the Mario Hat red brick. Could they not get the rights? Is the Mario Hat a separate license for the Mario enemies and power-ups? It's incredible how many animations there are in this game. Almost all the special characters have completely unique animations. Even the Chase McCain disguises have different animations from each other, despite that it's all one guy. Speaking of unnecessary but awesome animations, pedestrians can perform a lot of actions that the player can do in the game, such as chew bubblegum, eat food from stands, look through binoculars, but they also have animations that you can't do, such as throwing things away in a trash can, checking out newspapers, putting letters in mailboxes, smelling flowers, getting dirt off their feet next to trash cans. I love looking at the pedestrians and seeing what they do, not to mention the gazillion voice lines they have. A lot of locations are based on real LEGO sets. but the hospital and fire station are original to the game. The LEGO City website circa 2013 had a games page with an extremely cursed render of Chase McCain holding a real-life gamepad. Not the communicator, straight up, a Wii U gamepad. There are civilians in the game that are named after people that worked on it. Peculiarly, Lauren Colclough has Chase McCain's face for some reason. This seems like an inside joke we'll never know the origin of. Almost every version of Chase McCain is playable in the remaster. The Dimensions version is the second player outfit, and the original Wii U outfit only appears as the default police custom character. It's cool the old outfit is still in the game, but there might have been an oversight here because if you choose to customize it, none of the pieces can be selected again. Whoops. The reporter at the end of the rooftop level, Conrad Peters, is an actual character you can unlock. If you look back at the helicopter, however, you can see that it's not actually him piloting it. This render for Ellie Phillips has an error in it. Her right arm is yellow instead of white. 
Chase's astronaut suit in the cutscenes is different from the suit he wears in game. The idle animation of the skater has him doing some tricks with a skateboard. But the odd thing is that it's a unique shade of blue. If you try to spawn one yourself, you'll see that the specific shade the animation uses is unselectable within the color menu. Only two colors come close to it. The background of the box art is a mixed up version of streets from the game. The police station is a lot further away and the slope street is to the right of the bank. The bell tower in King's Court rings all the time. It never stops. I've waited. It's endless. Something happened to the taxicab model when it was ported over to the remaster, because the checker pattern became a black stripe. This is reflected in the icon as well. Level environments from the console version of LEGO City made their way to the 3DS game as rooms. And they're really impressive for the 3DS, like the blue bell mine level is remarkably close in graphics to the console version. Before you unlock the ability to use the train, the entrance at Auburn Docks is gated off and you can't access it. Unless you go under the bridge and go through the entrance the opposite way. Did you know you could slide down the support of Auburnbury Bridge like your shadow in Sonic Adventure 2? It doesn't work for any of the other ones as this actually leads to a super chicken glide. The police station basement has a different guardrail model in the scanner view. The newspaper stands are pretty interesting to look at. Up until now, I've never given it a close look because, you know. If you do look close though, there's this one with a generic red 2x4 brick, one with a mugshot of a criminal, and one referencing the LEGO truck set from 2010. Agent Chase is a character from the LEGO Agents theme that has no relation to Chase McCain, besides his first name and his hairpiece. Despite this, or maybe because of this similarity, his sunglasses are available to use in the character customizer. In addition to the pig cannons, you can deliver Jethro's pigs by riding it all the way to the farm. I don't recommend it though, it takes forever. You do get some extra dialogue for your effort though. I'm gonna make sure my pigs don't escape again by putting a new latch on their pen and taking away their lock picking tools. If you just go to the farm normally, Jethro tells you about your progress so far. You've got about half of them back, so that means there's only, uh, half of them left! Chan's Scrapyard is illustrated on the map, even though it's a separate level and gated off in the city. That's a really neat detail. But it's a lie. If you do go to the other side, you'll clearly see that it's missing. There's a hint stating that only characters with stethoscopes can crack safes, referring to the robber characters but doctors also have stethoscopes. So therefore, you can crack safes as a doctor. This is gotta be malpractice at its worst. Where are the LEGO City tax dollars going? Well, obviously not to the sewage system. Look at the sewer water. <laughs> the bricks you can collect to construct the sewer builds is such a cool idea that was done well in Undercover. It's a shame it didn't really get added to the later LEGO games. Even though they include similar landmark building mechanics, you buy them with studs instead. Such a wasted opportunity. But there is a redemption arc. LEGO The Incredibles, TT Fusion's most recent LEGO game, sort of reintroduces the bricks and super builds through its Incredibricks and Incredibles. And that does it for this part. That's right, part. I have a lot more details to talk about in part 2, so stay tuned for that later down the line. LEGO City Uncover is like a fractal image. The more you zoom in, the more details you find. Or maybe you just enjoy a game too much like me and start to appreciate they PUT A BUSH IN THIS GARDEN BRO, THAT'S CRAZY! Point is, TT Fusion put a surprising amount of detail in Undercover, and I couldn't appreciate it more. Of course, if you have any details or oddities you notice yourself, I would love to see them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and see ya.